This is an update for my Vector OSX CFPGI replica. If you don't know, it's a very old computer from USSR times, and I made an FPGA replica in 2008, and this is a port to a more modern development board called Tango Nano 9K. It is available from the usual sources. Anyway, this is uh, something about recent developments that I have. Uh, one, the most important one probably is this. It's what I used to implement keyboard support. Uh, it used to have a PS2 keyboard, but these days you don't really do PS2, so you can use your usual USB keyboard. This one is wireless, but it doesn't matter in most cases, I think. And Pi Pico just implements a USB host and sends keyboard matrix state to the to the main computer. The other thing that I want to show is and then USD. Uh, although I will probably show it a little bit later. Uh, the old one was just very small because it was mostly developed for larger screens. And in this project I really want to use this small screen. And so the OSD had to be made a little bit larger. And one other thing is uh, the, the sound output, which is pretty important. I will turn down the volume a little bit so that I could explain what is going on. Uh, the sound output is implemented using PWM. It's stereo output, so two channels. And the problem that I faced uh, when I just uh, did it the first time was uh, extreme noise on the output. And I looked around and the general kind of... Uh, idea was that you just cannot have a clean output if you use PWM. But uh, actually you can. Uh, the thing is uh, you just slice your power lines using the modulator. So if your power is dirty and uh, power lines on these uh, FPJ boards tend to be extremely dirty, uh, you slice dirt and then no matter how much you filter it, you get uh, the same noise. So the solution is actually very simple. You just take a regulator an LDO. Uh, I didn't paint the capacitors and everything because I just used a drop-in replacement with everything on board already. And you create a clean power source. And from that you power your Schmidt trigger or any other kind of logic gate actually, but I just happen to have this one and you pass on the PWM through it and you get a perfectly from, from from dirty PWM on this side you get a perfectly clean PWM on this side and this you already can filter properly even though it's not <laughs> not absolutely necessary because it would get filtered down anyway but just to have things in a more controlled manner. When you filter it down, uh, you buffer it. It's the most simple buffer that I could make because I did not want to have to bother with uh, dual supplies. So it's a single supply, LM358 I think. And just output it to, to it kind of line out to the jack. And of course this is replicated two times. So that's it, and you get a very clean output. Maybe if you turn the volume all the way up, uh, like to 11, you would hear some very high-pitched noise. Maybe especially if uh, your circuit also happens to be plugged into your computer. But otherwise, it's uh, really perfectly adequate for 
for a retro FPJ computer. So anyway, this is what I wanted to share. Uh, one interesting possible development is that since this microcontroller is pretty versatile, it also can be used to to have to, to attach other things to it. So one thing that could be attached also is a mouse, which currently really lacks any support in this particular computer, but who knows. Also, you could attach a mass storage here. And, well, well, it's also not necessary because we already have a micro SD card, but, uh, well, more options is always good. And, uh, yes, and of course, I have this... Oops, sorry. It's foldable. I also have this nice mini keyboard which I it already works on this uh, SP32 version um, but I want to basically to dismantle this and reuse this beautiful keyboard in, FPGA, in the FPGA project and because this keyboard already uses uh, Pi Pico it should be relatively easy so I think that's about it uh, right the menu but I already demonstrated it. Uh, the thing about uh, the new menu is also that it was ported to a new uh, new uh, CPU architecture. It was formerly 6502, but uh, 6502 was taking up really too much FPGA resources on this really tiny chip. So I looked around and I found a new 430 which is uh, a kind of MSP430 architecture microcontroller. I pulled the CPU from it and I ported the floppy emulator to it. So now I also have freed up quite a bit of resources because uh, this CPU also has much more compact code. And currently I can only load disks here, disk images, which is not very convenient because a lot of software for uh, for the vector is actually in, in the form of ROM files and you cannot use ROM files with this menu and this is something that I will also have to, to do later uh, yeah so I guess that's about it and thank you for watching and uh, make sure to come back later sometime when I have new updates probably a case or maybe something else, who knows. Here will be an example of some H253 music. Yeah, and I'm sorry, this is a bad apple. <laughs>